Open your Bibles, if you will, to the 37th Psalm. We're going to talk about tonight um, seven things David did to, not to sweat. And uh, I, I just want to, I want to preface what we're going to share tonight. We're going to talk about some things we need to do as individuals and as a church. Then we're going to talk about our church vision for the upcoming year. And I, but I want to tell you this. I know it's been rough for a lot of people in 2012. I know that 2012 was the year from Hades. I know for a lot of people that your, your finances were, were in the toilet. You were attacked. People lost their jobs. People, I mean, weren't getting paid. I mean, it was tough. The church, it's been tough for the church. But I want to make a declaration unto you. There's only about 20 more minutes of this year because next year is a, deep, is a totally different year. Now, I don't have some rhyme for the word, you know, 13 because to be honest with you, you could use that rhyme in 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. You could use that same slogan for the next six years. And I know everybody always like to come up with a little whatever if the Lord, and if the Lord gives it to you, fine. You know, but we, just don't, have, we don't need a rhyming slogan for the year if it's just because we try to come up with something that rhymes. Amen? Amen? Yeah. You know, the Lord gave me this one for the end. Of course, every church has a different, there's 5,000 different slogans the Lord gave for the, well, which one's the Lord's? You know, let's just, you know, what, what is the Spirit of God saying to the church at large? And what is the Spirit of God saying to our church? Amen? You know, because he does have, he, he will make specific statements to a local body. Uh, because, you know, maybe our body's in a place that another body's not. Another part of the body's not in. And uh, we need spe uh, specific things spoken to us. Uh, I want to tell you, this next year is a revitalization of vision, of purpose, of destiny. Glory to God. I was, um, I was, I was actually thinking about tonight, this afternoon, and how many ever have, have ever seen the movie Top Gun? Okay. How many have never seen the movie Top Gun? Wow. Okay. I thought I'd have a real easy one that everybody would communicate with, you know. It was Tom Cruise's breakout big time movie. Anyway, uh, in, in the movie Top Gun, you know, Cruise is he's flying his jet and they're in, they're in maneuvers and he flies through jet wash and loses his engines. They punch out his Rio, uh, hits the canopy being punched and kills him. And, um, and then they can't get him to really fly again. And then, and then they get to a combat situation later on in the movie and he does the same thing. He throws those jet wash, blows his engines out, but then he, re, he, he gets them back but he won't engage. And I, I think the Lord began to speak to me about how that, that a, a, number, a few years ago some things happened. We had some people leave that were very key and vital people to us. And it was kind of like going through the jet rush. We, we just kind of, it just kind of blew our flames out. At least for me as the pastor. And you know, and, and I, you know, and, and then you kind of, you know, kind of, kind of hobble along. And then in the past year or so, we had some people leave that kind of like flying back through that jet wash and you just won't re-engage. But the Lord says it's time to re-engage. It's time to get back into the game. It's time to get back after what, you know, and forget about all those things. Those things, you know, th those things happen. You know, you're going to fly out through jet wash. You know, how many know what jet wash is? It's when you're flying in combat formation and one jet goes across here and you fly right through the stream of all the stuff flying out. It can, it can put out the engines because your engines are, are being fueled by flames. You know, it can, it can blow in there and suffocate the oxygen and it, it turns the engines off. You, if you can't get them reignited, you're toast. Okay? And, and sometimes as Christians or even as churches, you're going along and you fly through somebody's jet wash and it just puts your flame out. Everybody, anybody have your spiritual flame put out? Amen. Thank you, Jeff. Anybody else? Okay. It is late. I know some of you want to be home in bed, but if you don't start hopping in here and getting with me, we're going to do the hokey pokey and we're going to do it till three. And we're locking the doors. Joe, lock the doors. <laughs> you ain't getting out of here. All right. We're going to have you put your whole body in. All right. Anyway. So, it is time for us to fulfill our destiny as a ministry. Amen. For, you know, a long time we've said, well, you know, in the right time, the right time, the right time. This is, it's time. It is time to step up. It is time to step out and out of, out of, uh, out of the place where we've been and step into what the Lord has for us. You know, and, I, and we can't compare ourselves among ourselves, you know, different churches or... Um, I've got a good friend. Uh, we, you know, he's been here, uh, John Nuzo, up in Cranberry Township, which these guys went to his church. 
We were talking one time about how his church just took off where they were and stuff. <clears throat> and uh, he says, you know, but Ed, there were six or seven Rhema guys who came up in this area, started churches, and took them to a certain place, and then closed and just left. And, and, you know, and we kind of showed up, and all those people from all those different churches were just kind of sitting out there, and, and, and they all kind of just flocked in and came to our church. So you can't really compare where you are or anybody else is to how we did it. Well, he, he got so many people in six months. Well, if you got <clears throat> six or seven churches that have started, run their numbers up 100, 150, 200, and then walk out the door, and those people just left because the pastor was a bozo. Hello. They look for somebody to come in and take over. Amen. And so he was talking to me about how that we can't compare ourselves among ourselves because everybody's circumstance is different. I said everybody's circumstance is different. Amen. And so what we're going to understand is that our time is coming. It is time for us, but we cannot do this in the flesh. You know, we can have great ideas. We can do this practice and we can put that in place. But we want to be able to do this uh, in the spirit by the Holy Ghost and get things done in the kingdom of God. Can you say amen? All right. So let's read Psalm 37, 1 through 7. Hallelujah. And it says here, fret not because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall be cut off, they shall be cut down like the grass and wither as a green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land and thou, and verily shalt thou be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of the heart. How many times have we quoted that scripture? Yeah, but it's kind of here in the middle of a bunch of other ones, isn't it? You know, you just can't run off and just pull one out. There's all kinds of things here. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Um, and he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way, because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. Cease from anger. And forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those that wait upon the Lord shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. So we have here in this psalm, and you know, usually David wrote a psalm um, after he had, either in the midst of going through something or after he had gone through something. Okay? You, sometimes he was right in the middle of doing it, and he would say, I'm going to trust the Lord, and, and the Lord's speaking to me, and so forth. <clears throat> Other times, and, and, and in uh, looking back in retrospect on something that he'd been through, th he write a psalm. And so, here we have the psalm of David, and he's, he's, t he's giving wisdom out of his experience of life. And we need to learn, you know, we, we, we learn. We learn from those who've gone before. You know, uh, we, we don't always, you know, sometimes it's better to learn from somebody who's done it before and gone through it before than it is to learn it yourself the hard way. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, it's, it's better to learn from those who've gone and done it before and found the answer than it is to learn it through the school of hard knocks. But if you don't learn from those who've gone before, you will learn it through the school of hard knocks or you'll get knocked out. Amen. So let's look at the first thing David says here. He says, fret not yourself because of evildoers. Now, well, we, we, and, and I'm saying, this is a word for our nation, for the Christian church in this hour. We just came through an election process that people were saying, if, if we don't get the right man elected, we're going down the tubes. I mean, we're, we're destroyed. We're done. We're toast, whatever. And, and you know what? Uh, and, and there's a lot of evil. I, if I, I don't doubt at all there was a lot of election um, um, fraud and all kinds of stuff. But we cannot fret over evildoers. We serve the true and the living God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the God who raises us up even in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, his people can still be raised up and rise to the top and be the cream of the crop. Amen. Amen. Are you here? You're going home. So don't be fretting over what evildoers are doing. Now, it's not, it's not fretting if you say, now, Lord, we need, this is wrong. This is going on. We're praying about that. We're putting that before you. Do, we, Lord, we, we invoke you to do something about this, whatever. That's not fretting. Fretting is, oh, my God, what are we going to do? Oh, Jesus, what are we going to do? Oh, I just don't know what we're going to do. Oh, help me, Lord. Oh, God. I just wish I could go ahead and die because it's just so bad down here. That's fretting. Amen. 
Amen? And the Lord has given us vision. The Lord's given us things to do. Our church has a calling. Amen? And I'm going to be honest with you, we've been, we've been on the sidelines far too long. There are things we have to fulfill. There are things we have to do and go out and get done. Amen? So, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, church, we're going to have to do it in the strength of the Holy Ghost. You say, well, I've been a tough place, Pastor. Yeah, we all are. Everybody is. Amen. It was so bad. That you, know, you don't have it this bad. It was so bad when the church first started that uh, people, when, when the Jews became Christians, they had funerals for their families. They disowned them, had nothing to do with them. They were no longer part of their family. And it was so bad that the church had to get all the money and collect all the money and bring it to the church to distribute it just to keep people from starving. That's how bad it was. The church became you know, a, a place where everybody came to get their food. It wasn't communism. It was survival. They had, that's the only way they could survive was pulling all of their resources together to get by. I don't think you're there. I said, I don't think you're there. Hello? I mean, you lose your job here. They pay you for 99 weeks to stay at home. We're not in that state. Stop fretting. Get your wind back in your sails. Amen. Amen. Begin to soar again. And don't be concerned about what evil does. Listen, the evil's going to be evil. Evil's going to do what evil does. Jesus made this very profound statement when, they walk, when, when um, the woman uh, came and washed his feet with, with her tears and, and, and dried it with her hair. And, and, and Judas, the thief, the only reason he was worried about the money because he was a thief, uh, said that money, that, 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 um, that could have been, oh, actually, perfume, but perfume on his feet and so forth, kissed his feet. And he said, that, you know, they, they could have taken that and sold that for 300 pence. And, and Jesus said, the poor you have with you always. Now, here's the head of the church telling you, you're not going to wipe out poverty. We think we're going to wipe it out. We think we're going to have some program that some church is going to come in, they're going to do, we're going to get rid of all the poverty. Jesus said, the poor you have with you always. There are certain realities in life we need to understand <clears throat> are going to be there. You're not going to get everybody saved. You're not going to go to the hospital and get everybody raised up. Although you believe in healing and the gifts of the Spirit, you're not going to get them all out of there. If that were the way it was, when Jesus got to Solomon's porch, they would have all gotten healed. Amen. But only one man got healed. Hello? Some people, I'm going to the hospital. I'll fall in the gifts of the Spirit. I'm going to raise them all up. Well, Jesus didn't. What makes you think you're going to? Hello? There are realities. There are evildoers in the world. Just face it. Now, as a believer, don't fret. Why? Because he's your, the Lord is your re -re reward. Amen. His angels are encamped round about you. Glory to God. There's more to be with you than be with them. Amen. Let's get back to a realization that the life of faith is God will protect me and my household and mine. But you know, don't think you will get rid of all the devil people. They're out there and they're going to stay out there. There's gonna, they're going to be there. Y'all hear you going home. All right. <laughs> Uh, so don't be, don't be, don't be fretting. We're not going to get communion at midnight. It's just ain't going to happen. <laughs> All right. Neither be envious against those who work on righteousness. Don't get uptight because some sinner makes money. You see the pimp in the neighborhood with his pimp mobile and his thug gang hanging around him with all of his girls hanging around him and you're getting envious because he's got the car, he's got the money, he's got the gold. The Bible says don't be envious of those who work in righteousness. Stop being envious of people who have more than you and they're sinning and you know it and you will begin to long for what they have because the only way you're going to get what they have is the way they got it. That's right. And that takes you out of the realm of faith, of being able to trust God and know that God's work. Listen, even in churches, we know we've got people who are charlatans, and they're building their churches on, on false teachings and doctrines and placating the, the sheep and, and making them, you know, giving them all kinds of stuff they want to hear. We can't be envious of that. They'll have to answer to God. And I'm going to be honest with you, I'm not willing to compromise what we're called to do to get the results they're getting because the results they're getting will also get the consequences that come along with it. Don't be envious. Next, he says this. Verse 3 says, trust in the Lord. Remember, Tim Kilson just came last month, or earlier this month, and preached that, that short 
compact, Holy Ghost anointed message on trusting the Lord. Amen. How many have gone back and listened to it? Go back and listen to it. It's only, what, 45 minutes? Something like that. It's a short thing. We, we, it's some things were given by the Holy Ghost. Some people in the church have already acted on it and things, God's doing things in their life because of it. Hallelujah. And I told Tim when he got done, I said, that word was for our church. I started not to have him come because there's just not enough money. There wasn't enough money to put him in a hotel. We cooked food for him instead of taking him out because there just wasn't enough money to take him out to eat. Couldn't even, really, couldn't even add to the offering. We always like to bless our guest ministers. They just wouldn't have finances to do it. He wanted to come anyway. He drove here that morning and drove back home that afternoon back to Brevard. That's where he was visiting his parents for a couple weeks. That's, that's, a night, that's not a short, that's about a three-hour drive. He got up early enough to drive here and be here for the morning service. Some of y'all can't make it across town. Anyway, he drove from Bavard and was here early. <laughs> Hallelujah. But he preached on trusting God. Trust, lean on, the Amplified says. Rely on, be confident in the Lord. And listen to this, and do good. It's time we once again gain the heart of doing good. That's what our VIP program is about, doing good. And it's not just something to do so, you know, uh, you know, uh, maybe slipped off or whatever, kind of got busy with Christmas. We wanted you doing something. We're going to change the color of the cards coming into the new year. We're going to have, and it's just going to be an ongoing program. We want you out there in the community telling them that God cares about them. Believing God to get something so you can give an extra dollar tip. Amen. And then buy somebody's drink. And I'm talking about non-alcoholic. <laughs> All right? I don't mean go by and buy some, a roll of marijuana or, or whatever, or sit, ship, have marijuana shipped from Colorado so you can give it to them. I'm talking about just doing something kind for people. Trust in the Lord. Trust that God will do what he said and take care of you in this coming year. When the church says we have a deed, you give and say, I'm trusting God to supply my need because I'm taking care of his work. Somebody say amen. amen. I'm trusting that the Lord will do exactly what he said. I'm going to take him, what? Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, thy soul, and thy strength, and thy neighbor as thyself. Where do you come in at? How many, how many remember the running back, running backs for the Chicago Bears, Brian Piccolo and Gail Sayers? Now, now, Brian Piccolo, there was a song, movie out in the 70s called Brian's Song. James Conn starred in it, and, um, oh, the other guy. Anybody remember? He played Gail Sayers. I, I forgot his name. I just, I just knew Jane Conn because he's on John Wayne movies. But Brian Piccolo died of cancer. But Gail Sayers had a real encounter with the Lord and wrote a book a few years later called I Am Third. And he said, and he took the, took the word joy and made an acronym out of it. Jesus first, others second, and you are third. And he wrote the book called I Am Third, meaning that we come after the Lord and others, then we come. But I'm, 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 I'm going to slam our own group. A lot of our prosperity preaching has put ourselves first over the Lord and other people. My new whatever comes before the church, before the things of God, before helping other people. My this, my that, my this, my that. When the Lord wants me blessed, yeah, third. You love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, and thy neighbor as thyself. We've got to get back to where the things of God are more important to us than, you know, that, that maybe I want something, but the, but the needs of the kingdom are more important than my wants. Because let's face it, you can't take it with you. Now, my, my desire for a car, I, I was talking to my son the other day. You know, sometimes you have to sacrifice things. I drive a minivan. I have two I drive. We bought a new one last year. It was, it was, it was a program vehicle, and, it was, and we got it really, really expensive. It's the least expensive vehicle we've bought. Lowest car payment on any vehicle we've ever had, I think. But, uh, I mean, I have too many minutes. I was driving over to Wesleyan one day to do some, Oh, I was out in the neighborhood, some of the kids from Wesleyan. So, big dog, what are you doing driving a minivan? I'm a family man. 
Now, do you want to? Yeah, I, I, when, I, when I was dating Janie, I had a Fiat Sport Spy, a Fiat Spider 124. Five, green, British racing green, tan interior, wood panel dashboard, five speed. Tan roof, tan interior, spoke wheels, luggage rack on the back end. It was sweet. And then when I, I traded, I, I, got, I got rid of that and got the, the Spider 2000 in 1979. Blue, metallic, light metallic blue, blue interior. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. It was, it was, I mean, it dripped honey in the driveway. I'm just telling you, it was sweet. Now, do you want to, I want a convertible again. I want a Z4. Or, I mean, I've seen some Audis I'd like to have or some BMWs I'd like to have. Wouldn't mind having a Jag. No, it wouldn't bother me a bit. But you know what? I'm in a stage of life that I'm going to have to sacrifice uh, because I've got children that I'm taking care of. I'm helping put through the, uh, the school. And there's different things you sacrifice. Although you may want the convertible. You may want to be able to ride around with your hair blowing in the wind. Rented one one day. We went up to Mount Mitchell and got up to Mount Mitchell. I had to pay $70 to rent that car. They had the whole family in there. And it got down to like 28 degrees. It was snowing. And I had the top down. The windows rolled up. The heat on the blanket saying, we rented this car for a convertible. We're keeping the top down. <laughs> Like, well. <laughs> they still remember it. Nathan was a little guy. Got out and took a, a picture of the sign. It was June or something, and it's Mount Mitchell, so many at feet, and we're in shorts and T-shirts with no coats. Set the camera up on the tripod and took our picture because it was 28 degrees with a 16-degree wind chill factor. But we had the top down. <laughs> Bless God. But in that personal way of sacrificing my wants for what's needful for our family, we need to realize that in personal things in the church, yeah, people preach, see, we, we can take a message wrong. God does not prosper you so that you can satisfy every want you have before you take care of his kingdom. And let me say this. Tithing is not taken care of. You bring the tithe and the offering. Now that doesn't mean you give every single, okay. All right, guys. <laughs> this is the East Coast. We're going Central Time. <laughs> Bill said, I've been on fire since I got this. He can't keep up with me now. I'm like, I've been loosed, glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. We are to trust in the Lord. Trust God. Why don't you trust God to bless you with the things you want instead of you blessing yourself and never getting it to the church? Nothing making it to the kingdom of God. I know people that do that. They're always blessing their self. There's nothing wrong with having things. Do you understand that? But I want to tell you something. I've got a, a bunch of TVs in my house. I've got one, two, three 32-inch TVs in my house, flat panel televisions. I have a 55-inch flat panel television in my bonus room. I have not bought one of them. Every one of them been given to us. Hello. Most of them by my mother-in-law. Mother I, I don't say mother-in-law in a bad way. I go mother-in-law. Another TV set. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. <clears throat> I'm telling you. I, I mean, I like a big, I don't like the big surround sound. I, I needed another surround sound. My dad gave me his. He didn't like, he didn't want his. He has to listen to his on the speaker because you know, my mama won't let him turn it up. So he said, well, you want mine? I said, sure. <laughs> it's in my bedroom. My bedroom rocks, baby. You ought to hear Top Gun in my bedroom. I mean, the bed rattles. You think that if Les were there, he'd be casting the devil out. No, it's just the base cabinet. But we're to trust the Lord. Why don't we start trusting God? I'm telling you, church, the life of faith is how we're supposed to live. Let's get back to trusting God. Amen. Doing what he said. Take care. Do good. Take care of the things of God. Take care of the work of God. Put God first in your life again. Come to church. I ain't feeling good. Come to church. People, people, who, people will get up and go to the doctor when they don't feel good, but they won't come to church. They're practicing medicine. Jesus is the healer. 
Amen. We can get the job done through the Holy Ghost and the power of God. Amen. So he says here, trust the trust the Lord, lean on, reply, be confident. I mean, not rely on and not reply. And be confident in the Lord and do good. See, when you're trusting God, it liberates you to do good because you're not afraid you're going under if you do something. Amen? Amen. Fourth, <coughs> delight yourself also in the Lord. Now, delighting yourself in the Lord is not coming in half hour late and mad because you've got to be there. I understand people get late. I, think, I understand things happen. I mean, you got up and, you know, uh, your hair dryer was broke. You, know, you had to hang your head out the window on the way to church to dry your hair or something. I, I mean, I understand all that. Or you had to, you know, your husband had to run somewhere to grab a hair dryer so you could come to church because you ain't going out in public looking like that. I get it. I know things happen. But I've seen people come to church and come in late every time because they don't like how loud our worship is. You're not delighting in the Lord. You, all you care about is you. I'm going to tell you something. I've done worship with people who can't sing. I've been in services where you thought, my God, they can't sing. But you know what? We can still worship the Lord. Amen. We can still honor the Lord. We can delight in the Lord. We can all get together and make a glad racket unto him. Hallelujah, because it ain't singing. Now, I've led before. That's how I know how some of y'all feel. Let's make a glad racket unto the Lord. Pastor's leading tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. We have to understand, we have to trust in and rely on the Lord, and we have to do good. Amen. Then we have to delight ourselves in Him. There's, we've got to get back to delighting ourselves in the Lord. That going to church is not a drudgery. And let me say something. If going to church is a drudgery, it's nothing wrong with the Lord, and I'll leave it there. Amen. It ain't the Lord's fault. And everybody said, Hallelujah. Y'all just heard all hand over Messiah all Christmas, I'm sure. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. If you dread going to church, it ain't the Lord. We need to get back to delighting in the Lord. Yeah, we have interpersonal things that happen. Yeah, sister so-and-so did something last week. And it, I mean, it rung your bell. But you know what? You don't quit your job because somebody rings your bell, do you? <laughs> Hello? Well, I need my job. You think you need your job? You need the Lord more than you need your job. Yeah. You need a relationship with the Lord more than you need a, a job. We've got to get back to this. So we're so delighted in the Lord that somebody can be dog ugly to us, and it just ain't going to keep us from being delighted in the Lord. You know, we'll go home and pray for them. We'll do good to them that do, sp that, that do uh, spitefully to us. We'll, we'll render good for evil. Amen? We've got to get back to being Bible practicers. I've heard people say, well, I don't have to be the devil's doormat. Yeah, but you sure better be uh, God's laying down your life for your friends, Matt. Yeah. Yeah. Greater hell hath no man than this than he laid down his life for his friends. Well, they ain't my friend. Jesus said, Do you know what the, that, that word friend in, in that language did not mean buddy. It meant covenant partner. When you're in the kingdom of God, we're all covenant partners. We're all in covenant with the Most High. We're all part of that same family. And so, yeah, maybe, maybe, they, maybe they get under your skin. But you know, Frankie Valley sang a song about that. I got you under my skin again. All right? <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. And they might be on your skin again. You know? Well, it's like John Houston used to say this. He said, if somebody's rubbing your fur the wrong way, turn around. <laughs> Amen. There is just something about the need of the church in this. I am telling you, we need each other so much. We need each other now more than we ever have in our walk with the Lord and in our time here on this earth. I'm 54 years old, and I've never seen the things going on the earth that we see going on. I never thought our nation would turn her back on Israel. I never thought they would be talking about taking your guns. I never thought they'd be talking about taking your 401Ks and putting in Social Security. I never thought a lot of things that are going would be going on. We, the church, needs each other. 
Oh, yeah, and I'm going to, I may offend you. I, I guarantee I've offended you. Why? Because I breathe. Yeah. Hello. And you probably offended me. Why? Because you breathe. Yeah. Yeah. We still have flesh we have to deal with. But if we get to delighting ourselves in the Lord, yeah. we kind of get, listen, you can't offend the Lord. Yes. Hello? He still loves you. And he says if we'll delight in him, what's he going to do? He'll give you the desires of your heart. One reason we're not seeing a lot of things that we want to see is because we haven't been delighting in Him enough. We come to church, we're looking for this, we're looking for that, we're looking for this, we're looking for this relationship, we're upset about that, this, that, that blah, 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 and we're not doing enough delighting. We're not delighting enough. Because He, let me tell you something, Pastor Ed can't meet your need. Marty cannot meet your need. He can fix your air conditioner and your heat, but he can't meet your need. Are you here? The one that meets your need is the one you have to delight in. The one who satisfies your heart is the one you delight in. The glory and the lifter of your head is the one you're supposed to be delighting in. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Then he says this. You just don't stop at delighting. He said, commit your way unto the Lord. Commit your way to the Lord. That means, in the Amplified Bible, it says, to roll and repose each care of your load on him. Trust, lean on, rely, and be confident also in him, and he will bring it to pass. He will make your uprightness and right standing with God go forth as light and your justice and right as the shining sun of the noonday. What does it say? Commit your way unto him. We have got... Uh, I'm talking, we, I say we, I'm talking about me. I'm talking about you. We have got to get back once again. We are committing our ways unto the Lord. Yeah. Some, you know, it can get, I was talking to, to someone recently, and they're, they're going through a really tough place. And I said, look, I, how about get this particular resource and look at it and, re, and, and look over it. It'll help you. How, how long has it been since you looked at that resource? Well, it's been years. Well, look at it. It'll help you. I said, I know you, you, you've, you've, you've ex availed yourself to that before. I know you've had access to that before. But we can let things slip. Yeah, yeah. And if you'll go back, I know it'll help you. I know it'll help you. I know this resource will be a help to you if you'll go back and take up. A, we've got to go back and realize that we're to be committing ourselves to the Lord. We have to commit ourselves to the Lord. Amen? Are you here? Yes. And he will make your uprightness and right stand with God go forth as light. God will sustain you when you're committing yourself to him. God will honor you. God's honor will come on you when you're committing your ways to him. Amen. Testing one, two, blue mic. I need double A's. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. It says here, um, be still and rest. Remember he told the children of Israel when they came up and they were facing the, the, the Red Sea and, the, you know, the Pharaoh's army was behind them, the Red Sea was in front of them. Be still and see the salvation of your God. There's not a been, there hasn't been enough being still and resting in the Lord to see a salvation. We're antsy. The spirit of the world right now is antsiness. It's uptight. Things don't move fast enough. I'll tell you what, God don't have any hungry jack ants to potatoes. Or Idahoan, whoever Walmart or Sam sells. Hello? It takes time to peel them. It takes time to boil them. It takes time to drain them and mash them up and put butter and cream in there and salt and get them right. 
And some of the things you're waiting on God for, you've got to get back to where you're able to rest in Him. Can somebody else say amen? And then uh, let's listen to this one. Fred, let's see, he said, be still and rest in the Lord, wait for Him. Patiently lean yourself upon Him. And the, you know, the Scripture says this, and with patience possess ye your souls. We've lost that art in the church of being patient. <coughs> Amen. I mean, people preach a supernatural debt cancellation, and people wanted it right now. They talk about, well, the book of Acts, that was a suddenly. That suddenly took thousands of years to come. It was prophesied thousands of years before it showed up. <laughs> come on now. Hello? And then we go find the people to give the testimony. I put $500 in the offer. The next day, my house is paid off. We don't get the guy who, well, I put $500 in the offer 25 years ago, and just yesterday I got, you know, somebody gave me $25,000. took 25 years. We don't, want to, we, we don't put those guys up there. And we, we, we skew... We skew the perspective of people so they're not patient anymore. They'll be still and rest with him. Wait for him. Patiently lean upon him. And then, you know, the uh, Amplified says, fret not yourself because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked devices to pass. We do not have to be concerned about the fact that evil people are making money. Hello? Back on? Yeah. Amen. We just got to, we got to be still and rest in the Lord. We have to be still and rest in the Lord. Last one. Cease from anger and forsake wrath. <clears throat> Refusing to let anger go. Holding on to wrath. Listen to what it says. Fret not yourself, it tends only to evil doing. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait and hope and look for the Lord in the end shall inherit the earth. Wow. I have never seen anything like the spirit of anger that gets on, a spirit, a spirit of anger getting on people. And they get on people, and, and, and I've had them get it on, about, uh, toward me. There's a guy who used to go to this church a number of years, a number of years ago. And there was somebody else who was in our church. And this guy had been gone for a long time. And the only reason he didn't like me was because I told his girlfriend he was sleeping with, she needed to stop sleeping with him. You're, you're not married, stop sleeping with him. You want to get married? You want to have sex? Get married. Bottom line. So he didn't like that because he was a player. Well, you can't be a player and serve God. And you can't be the playee. You're going to have to do some things. Amen? Well, he, 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 he walked up to this guy, saw a guy at a gas station, went to our church. I want to tell you, what, just, just out of the blue, I got Pastor Ed, and he just went off. All I ever, the only thing I could ever have done was, was cut off his, his, uh, his honey. Because I talked to her. Hello? Yeah. You know I'm talking right. Am I not talking right, Janice? Oh, talking yeah. <laughs> People can get mad. Where is cease from anger? I'm going to step in it right here about knee deep. You may be thrilled about our last election, and you may be livid. But let me tell you, you don't have time to be angry. Yes. We need to cease from anger and forsake wrath. Amen? Why? Because it attends only to evil doing. And I say, we love the pastor. Amen. You didn't say it. One, two people did it. We had to cease from anger and, and forsake wrath. Amen. Because it tends to evil doing. Wow. Don't you hate it when somebody reads the Bible and tells you what the Bible says? 
well, I'm under grace, nothing matters. And then you go read what the Bible says. They, they'll get mad and leave. Why don't you stay in church? I, I know, um, uh, it, it, well, the girls have told us about being in class, and students got up and walked out on Pastor Hagen. Got up in the middle of class and walked out. He's a better man than I am. Because I would have said, get their names, and they just keep right on walking off the campus. You walk out on me, you don't come back here. <laughs> better man than I am, because I've been right behind them. Amen? And I, um, I won't say something. I'll, I'll say that for later. <laughs> There's just some things just to say for later. Hallelujah. So, where does this bring us? If we'll do these things, we can live life without sweat, without sweating. You know what it means? You know, don't sweat it. Rest. Get into the things of God. Flow with God. It doesn't mean you're not going to have to do, put forth spiritual effort, but you won't be doing it in the natural. Brother Bill, how are you doing there? <laughs> His wrist, wrist exercises. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, hey, Brother Bill's going to say, man, why did y'all give him an iPad? <laughs> Hallelujah. I mean, he's like a dog unleashed. It's like when I got my first wireless microphone. Glory to God. Wireless notes. Hallelujah. Wireless Bible. Hallelujah. What, how does this relate to us as a church? We have a call of God. We have purposes. There are things we're supposed to do. We've got to get back in the saddle and get to doing it, but in the Spirit. We need to be listening to God. You need to be sensitive to the Holy Ghost. So the Lord can speak to you and say, you know what? The church needs such and such right now, and I want you to give it. Yeah. And pastors out there going, well, we need $5,000 this week. You know, we need to raise a special offering. Who wants to pledge this? You just get it. You know, the Lord said, the Lord spoke to you and says, give $5,000 to the church. Well, the pastor didn't say anything about it. I, it doesn't matter what he says or doesn't say. I said, and you're going, I'm committing my ways unto the Lord. And he's going to take care of me. Amen. So, as our church vision, this next year, 2013, is a year that we are going to grow the kingdom of God. <coughs> How? By growing our church. Folks, we need to get back to, you know what? We got taken to the streets on Saturday. I'm coming. Yeah, but I don't like to go out on Saturday mornings. And? I don't like to get up on Saturday mornings. So? What's, let me tell you something. When we get to heaven... That Saturday is not going to be, it's not going to matter to you if you got to sleep in. But if we win people to Jesus and build the kingdom of God and expand the kingdom of God, that'll matter. Because yeah. remember, the Lord says, store your treasure up in heaven where moth doth not enter in nor rust corrupts. Amen. Amen. So we're going to grow the kingdom of God by growing our church. This year we're going to grow this church. Amen. 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 Now, we, not me. We. I am not the hireling who does all the work. I'm the shepherd. And I don't beget sheep. Sheep beget sheep. That means we got to, we, as a church family, we got to get together and make a commitment. We're going we're gonna to see the things of God. We, we have influence. We had, Bill gave me these stats, and I divided it out. We, we reached, without Roku, an average of about 8,500 8, people a month off of our internet. That's about 2,000 people a week. Well, if we told everybody we had a 2,000 member church, you'd be going, whoa, glory to God. We just done it in cyber. Now, Roku, we have 2,700 households that, that are on the, the Roku boxes with our Speak Faith television that we builds on. I'm, we're on. We don't know how many people we're reaching in the world. We do know we're reaching them. We, we, Janie read the letter today from the Philippines where the guy was in the Philippines, and he's taking my messages and, and listening to it and then going preaching it to his people. In the Philippines. We're touching the Philippines from right here. Well, that's all great. But we have our Jerusalem too. Yeah. We've got to get busy about reaching people. We have what people need. In the past week and a half or two weeks, I've been in phone conversations with people where I am ministering to them, and I'll tell you what is stirring me up. Because I'm hearing the I'm sitting there sometimes going, where'd that come from? Yeah. There's a wisdom coming up, and I'm going, my God, that's the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen. And it's the right thing and the right thing. It's the right thing. You know? God's, you, God's speaking. We have, we have a purpose. This coming year, we're going to strengthen our families. We've got too many family problems. 
We have marriages that are dealing with stuff. We've got parents with children that are dealing with stuff. We need as a church family to understand that we are also, also family. And we're, we're going to believe God to have the wisdom to speak into your families as never before, to eradicate stuff. I, 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 I know someone that's dealing with some stuff, man. They're going, through, they're going through a tough place with their family and stuff. And I'm, my heart just went out to them. Because if it had, had, had decisions been made right this way or this had taken place at this time, they may not be in a certain place. But God is good. And we're going we're gonna to strengthen our families. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to grow in Christ. We're going to grow in the things of God. We're not going to come to church and say, hit me, Pastor, with some sermon if you can. I'm watching it on television at home, and you can't, do, you can't beat so-and-so, and you can't outdo so-and-so. We're going we're gonna to grow in the Lord. We're going to grow up in Christ. We're going to find out what's important as a believer versus what we like. Amen. We're going to plant a church this next year. Yes, we are. We're going to have a satellite church. That's what God's got, God's, we got to do. We got to do it. That's the thing God put on our hearts. thought we were going to do it last year, but it, I could never get clear. I could never get clear. I could never get clear. We're doing it this year. It's happening. Well, that means I need you. We need to be growing here and building here and getting a foundation ready so we can go do that. Because there are people we have to reach there. And there's things we have to do there. We need a strong base to work from. Let me say this. I've got an open door right now to travel anywhere in the world to any of the 150 Rainbow Bible Training Centers and preach. All over the world. I said all over the world. We can go anytime, anywhere. We have relationships with people in other places that, that aren't connected to Raymond in that way that we have open doors. I mean, Mary and Zirkle have been trying to get us down there to Guatemala for 10 years. And I just haven't been free to go. Ken Cassett wants us to come back to Estonia. We're going to expand our missions. We're going to get busy about doing the things of God. This year is not going to be done with the human effort. Amen. I feel like we're getting back in the saddle and we're riding herd. Yeah. Amen. We're going on a roundup and we're going to get some stuff done. Now, I want to know you're willing to go with me. You're going to hook up with me. You're going to pray and come to church prepared. Yeah. You can't come to church half asleep and thinking, well, here we go again. Or I don't like the way that so and so is the head this or the head that. I don't like the fact that so and so is the head usher. I, I'd want to be the head usher. Or someone says the head soundboard person. I don't like the fact I got to work in a nursery with somebody. You know what? We need nursery workers. Can I say something? I go, I, I, we have people coming with, with children, and I'm going to the board to find out who's working in the nursery. We shouldn't be doing that. I shouldn't need to go to the board to find out who's working in the nursery. We ought to have people lining up <coughs> to get in there. Well, Pastor, I don't like working in the nursery. Yeah, but we need you. I'm going to tell you something. Somebody, I was at, I was at a meeting with Brother Summerall. How many of you ever heard of Lester Summerall? I was at a missions conference with him, and we're sitting right there in South Bend, and uh, Brother Summerall, and they were having a question session. He, they said, but Pastor, I said, Brother Summerall, I can't get people to work in my nursery. He said, we, we, we just, we just, we have such a hard time, and uh, obviously we're in a denominational church, because they have worse than a denominational church, don't you? You get the bulletin this week, and it says, nursery workers next week. And if your name's on the roll book, you go in the nursery. And they tell you when you're bringing flowers. And they tell you when you're cleaning the church. How many grew up that way? Yeah. yeah. Your, your name shows up in the bulletin the week in advance. And it's your responsibility. And then, of course, they all get in competition who can get the best flowers. I can't believe they bought them flowers. I heard it. Can't believe they bought them. I can't even believe they, they, they probably cost them $10 to put them flowers in there. <laughs> and you think I'm joking. I ain't joking. They all sitting out there judging the flowers. Can't even hear the preacher preach. And in some kinds of the one time in the church that I was in, that was a good thing because he was running around with the deacon's wife. They said, Brother Summerall, how do you get people to work in your nursery? He said, oh, that's easy. This week you're in there. Next week you're in there. That's how I do it. <laughs> Okay, Brother Summerall. Try
try telling him no. <laughs> that man had a garage door on both ends of his garage. You know why? Because he drove in one door and he drove out the other because he never backed up for anything. <laughs> he wouldn't park in a parking space unless he could drive through it. Why? Because he don't back up. You could take a reverse off his car. But if we're going to do these things, it's going to take an effort. We have to see the vision of the church as bigger than what we want or what we desire. This is a God calling. We are called of God. Amen. God sent me to Greensboro to do a work and to have a vision and to carry forth his plan. Amen. And I know there have been people who have been mouthpieces <coughs> over the years because <coughs> we didn't move in a timetable they thought we should move in. That's okay. I, I, I can't fret over them. This is our year to be restored to our calling and our vision and get the job done. It's going to take your efforts. It's going to take your faithfulness to, to tithe and to give. But that's not enough. Some people think if they just put money in, that's all they need to do. We need you. I said, we need you. Hello? How many knows you don't see my wife in the church much in here? Do you know why? Because she teaches children's church class every Wednesday night all year. She teaches three or four months out of the year on a Sunday morning. Over there. Sometimes, and if somebody else can't do their month, she does that. Sometimes it's five or six. If, the, if, the, if, our, if somebody's not there to preach for the youth, she's teaching the youth. If there's nobody in the nursery and she's not doing all those other things, she's in the nursery. Hello? Well, she, don't, she loves children, but you know what? Nobody in the church should be doing all that. Well, she's your wife. She should be. No, oh, you better hold that horse. <laughs> we need you. I said, we need you. Amen. Hello? We need ushers. Yeah, but I want to preach. My God. You want the microphone in the pulpit and you won't change a diaper? Not at Faith and Victory Church. Like the preacher's wife. That man's got a smile so greasy you can fry chicken on it. We want, we want to, I, I'll work here, but I got to be in charge. <laughs> you ain't even proving yourself faithful just to be there. And I'm going to put you in charge? We have to get back to being servant-minded, faithful-minded, so that the church can get... We have a job to do, and I need you. I can't do it all. I'll tell you something. You want to know what happens? If somebody doesn't come along and help, it's like Moses in the battle. As long as you hold your, his arms, as long as his arms are up, we win. But he became weary in holding his arms up, and Aaron and Ur had to come and hold them up for him. He, Aaron and Ur, is that right? Huh? Aaron and Ur. Her. Yeah. But yeah, we're Southern. That's Ur. Yeah. <laughs> we don't pronounce the H in the South. We're, we're not, we're not uh, uh, humble. We're humble. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> Sorry. All right. Aaron and Her. Ur for the Southerners. All right. They had to hold his arms. He could not. He's the man of God. He's anointed of God. He's called of God. He's the leader of God. Yet he had to have help to sustain him so the battle could be won. Jamie and I can't do it by ourselves. We are incapable of doing it by ourselves. As a matter of fact, we're incapable of doing it with just three or four people helping we need the whole church involved, on time, ready to serve. When a visitor walks in and there's a child, we don't have to be concerned. Is somebody in the nursery today would to take care of that baby? If we're, but see, I just gave you the things to do so we don't have to do it in the flesh. We can do it effortlessly. We can do it in the spirit. 
Are y'all here? You going home? Yeah, but I give a lot of money to the church. That's, that, that's, that's how I don't. No, 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 no. If you're, if you're tithing, you ain't giving any more than anybody else is tithing. And your giving money is not an out for service. Amen. That's my ministry. And we still need help over here. Hello? Amen. We need you to help us. And I don't need help you telling me how to do it better. I need help. Are you here? We've got a job to do. I can't go out knocking on all the doors. You've got to come help knock on doors. I can't keep the church straight. You've got to come help keep the church straight. I can't preach and work the nursery. I'm not that good. I mean, I'm big dog and I'm good, but, you know, but I can't do that. I guess I could go back there and sit in the room and hold the babies and while they go, blah, 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 and I probably try to preach to you. But it's not going to have the same effect. We need you. And if 2013 is going to be different for this church, then this church has to be involved in making it different. To see the finances turn around, to see the church grow, to reach out and to get more, to do more, to win more. Hello. Hallelujah. We need the starters. Just this, we need the starters. I was like, what? You trying to tell me something? They're better preaching to my iPad. Y'all with us? You ready to run the race? Ready to get the job done and see the vision come to pass? God calls us to go his way. And I'm telling you, I have not left because he won't let me leave. I've, had, I've been counseled by friends, ministry friends, to leave Greensboro. God called us here. He gave me a calling. He gave me a vision. We have to fulfill our purpose and our calling. Amen. We need you running the race with us. Amen. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you you've given me this message to share. It's been given by inspiration of the Spirit. And your calling says that, that we can get the job done and we can do it in the Spirit and not do it in the flesh. And we'll get the job done in Jesus' name. 